Hello, my name's Bruce uh, Downey. Um, I've got a particular interest in this sort of history of Govan Hill, and I uh, have found quite a few uh, interesting sort of uh, newspaper articles. I've done quite a lot of research on uh, the history of Govan Hill and Cross Hill, and, and I'd like to share some of that with you. Uh, and the first, th first thing I would like to tell you about is uh, some information from the, the 1841 census. This is the very first census that was uh, conducted in Scotland. And at that time, Govan Hill was a very, very small village. There were only 11 people living in it. This was three cottages uh, just, uh, just east of Cathcart Road. Um, and there was just 11 people there, three families. And... Um, and, 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 and living in three cottages. And uh, round the corner from the village of Govan Hill was the, the village of Fireworks, where, where a lot of the miners lived. Uh, there was 600 people living there. And in that census district, there were 943 people altogether. And, and the, some of the statistics are quite interesting. Um, 500 of those 943 people, 558 were born in Lanark, 265 were born elsewhere in Scotland, but 113 were born in Ireland. So there was there was a a noticeable a notable Irish population uh, way back then, and, and almost certainly several years before that as well. So that. Was that was that was how Govan Hill looked in 1841. It changed dramatically uh, in 1851 uh, when uh, pe people started coming over to uh, to work in the the, the Dixon's Blazes and the Ironworks. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you about that another time. So the next stop uh, is an advert uh, that was in a cinema program from 1935. It's a, a program for the Hamden Cinema which was on Westmoreland Street. Uh, that later, in later years, that cinema would actually become the Clada Club. But the advert is for Neeson's Bar on, um, on Allison Street. And uh, it's quite interesting because uh, they obviously put a lot of care and attention into the... Uh, into the, the, the advertising in those days. Uh, so... Let me just take you through it. Uh, this this is from 1935, but but there's, Neeson's was established in 1901. In 1935, P. J. Neeson was still listed as the proprietor, uh, and here's what uh, here's what uh, they're promoting. How here's how they're promoting the bar. Uh, it's a little bit of poetry. A house where cronies like to meet, stand at the bar or tack a seat, to crack a joke, enjoy a laugh, or foam and pint, or glass and half, pleased with you and another, good fellowship brings cronies here, to hae a dram together. And it goes on to say, we are noted for the consistent prime condition of our draft beer, all the best known proprietary whiskies stocked, our own special blend, which we are partial to ourselves, is good for weddings, grand for christenings, and no bad at any time. And then it finishes with another little uh, uh, bit of poetry. They travel near and wander far, but they aye come back to Neeson's Bar. So uh, that's Paddy Neeson's, and it's still there to this day. Now let me tell you uh, about uh, a little bit about the Holy Cross Mission on um, Dixon Avenue. Well, it, it, the Holy Cross Church on Dixon Avenue, um, but uh, it started on, on Daisy Street um, uh, back in 1882. Uh, it wasn't a church at that time, it was just a, it was a chapel at ease, uh, and it was designed to meet the growing demands of the, the, the Catholic population within the area, who, could, who couldn't easily come uh, anywhere else so, but the new the new building had a, a dual purpose. It was to serve as a chapel and a school. Um, the Education Act of 1872 had 
made education compulsory uh, under the management of parish school boards, but the the, the Catholic authorities uh, opted out of that system and they and they appointed governors uh, approved by the church, usually the parish priest. Uh, so in 1882, uh, Miss Hannah Power was appointed teacher in charge, uh, and the and she took uh, she took over on the the fourth of June 1883, uh, and then in 1884 she was joined by two new staff and a first year pupil teacher uh, called M Haggerty. Uh, so two years later, the congregation had grown sufficiently uh, for Holy Cross to become independent, um, and the first priest in charge was a a man called Father Peter Link, who was German, and he'd come to Scotland because of Bismarck's uh, anti-religious legislation. Um, there was no presbytery at this point, so he rented a flat on Garturk Street, uh, which allowed him to live in the area. Uh, and and he's, he was there when Govan Hill and Cross Hill were really sort of beginning to, uh, to, to grow and expand. Um, so he, Father... Father Link was only there for a short time, and then he was succeeded by um, William O'Brien, uh, and he was uh, a, a man of great vision and energy. And uh, he took uh, he, he stayed in a, a house on Albert Road called Devon Villa, and it, by that point also it was clear the chapel school wasn't going to be big enough because the, the population, the Irish population, was getting a lot bigger. Uh, so they started building a... a a second larger school right next door. Um, uh, today, that is now, that's still there today, and it's called the, the Daisy Street Neighbourhood Centre. Um, and and that opened on in September 1900. Um, and, but, the, but this was the busy time. This was the boom time. You know, Gla Govan Hill had be just become part of Glasgow, and the population was growing, and... Uh, they needed it, it, they needed even more space so that it was it was time to build a church and uh, uh, they started raising money for that in 1905 um uh, and eventually the church on the the church on uh, Dixon Avenue opened uh that wasn't an easy journey because lots of uh people living on Dixon Avenue objected and they wouldn't uh you know, approve the the planning permission for for that, but the 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 church took the case to the the Senate in um to the Senate in Edinburgh, and they finally got approval, and and uh, the new church opened on, on in 1911, and uh, there were there were so many people wanting to come uh, on that for the first on the first day. They had to sell tickets, and it was ten shillings uh, and five pence to get a ticket for the for the first session. Uh, so that's so that's three different places that Holy Cross has uh, uh, been uh, in Govan Hill. But this is one of my favourites. Um, this this is going back. This is an article uh, going back to eighteen twelve. There wasn't much of a place called Govan Hill at this time, but this was in Paul Madi, uh, just a little further east, and uh, uh, there was a there was a there was a big Irish population there, mostly mostly involved in mining at this point. But you know, way back then, uh, you know the the in, people entertained themselves in, in different ways, and one of those ways was boxing, bare knuckle boxing. And the, the journalist uh, that was attending this, uh, he, he writes, on the evening of Monday night, a pugilistic exhibition took place between two Irishmen in an enclosure at Paul Medi near Glasgow. They fought with courage and one of, one of them was very much punished. What is remarkable, the mother of one of the combatants eyed the progress of the fight with the greatest eagerness. And when he received a blow, she encouraged him by crying out, Never mind the blood, by your mother's milk stand fast. As might be expected, her son was victorious. So, 
that just made me smile. I hope it makes you smile too. Right, I've got an, one more for you. And this is from 1946. And it's written, an article written uh, by, uh, by an Irishman who's returning to returning to Glasgow for the first time in 35 years. And he takes a walk around the city to see how much it's changed. Uh, but he walks into a cinema and he writes, a Glasgow cinema, it is still raining outside, but inside there is a blaze of electric light and 2,300 Irishmen, women and children, together with their sisters and their cousins and their aunts, have packed themselves into the auditorium to hear a St. Patrick's Day concert. The curtain rises on a red-robed choir of schoolboys singing, Hail, glorious St. Patrick, in Irish. Thy people, now exiles on many a shore, shall love and revere thee till time be no more. And the fire thou hast kindled shall ever burn bright, its warmth undiminished, undying its light. That's only a small part of the article, but I, I thought that was a bit a bit worth reading. So, uh, yeah, there's lots and lots of stories about uh, to be found about the the Irish in in, in Govan Hill and, uh, and and in Glasgow more widely. You know, uh, that's just a few of them. So, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for listening. <laughs>